everything around Pulp Fiction. Software guy. Software guy. Well, I'm going to call him designer. Software guys are designers, too. And in this freaking awesome case, let's see this. All right. We're not going to go too far, but there's something in there, baby. There's something in there. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, Scott Mikulski did the art on Pulp. Uh, tell us about the journey with that a little bit. Anything that you do your curveballs and things together? Only that in the early part, I was trying to emulate the movie with you know, images from the film and stuff, and, and he goes, if you guys don't understand what I want, then I, I'll get somebody, my own guys, to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> so I had to sit down and kind of rethink what he wanted, and what he wanted was like a 70s pinball, 80s pinball, but not based on the movie, per se. You know, yeah. Kind of, so that's kind of why it's the character. I, I love how you brought all the characters into the scene. Yeah. Uh, Notice the Jack Jackrabbit on the left. Any controversy around bringing him in there, or was he like? I guess he was featured on the sign, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. supposed to be Jackrabbit. So you know, the bottles behind the bar. Where the bottles? Yeah. Each bottle has the meaning. Um, it's for each team member. Each bottle in the bar in the back. All right. So now there's a thousand of the LE bottle, right? Did you, you call it LE, or yeah. yeah? And then the other one is there a limit on that one as well? No limit. No limit. All right. Friday the 13th. This is Kyle, right? Cracking it open. Spent a year and a half on this, which is a ridiculously short amount of time for what it is. The call outs from the real actors. Call outs from the real actors. Call outs from six real actors. We got six actors from the series providing custom call outs, 23 modes, four multi balls. Took me a year and a half. Uh, all original layout using parts from Williams, Stern, JJP, American Pitball, and Deep Root. So this is from Walking Dead, that's from Tron, that's from Hobbit. Alright, give me that again. Alright, this is from Tron, this is from Walking Dead, this is from Hobbit, uh, that's from Spooky, this is from Kiss, this is from Terminator. Uh, and the flippers are deeper flippers, and I've got chain pop written on the point. I play the flippers better. You alright with that? Yeah. David Peck, Rotor Dave, if you're on pin side. David Peck, uh, these guys have been working on this for how long? About two years. Two years. It's amazing. I mean, I played a lot of homebrews here. Some play great, some play don't great. Not many play great. Yeah. This one yeah. definitely hits the mark. My favorite thing is it's just like so immersive, like it sucks you in. Uh, we'll get into that though. What's the story on this game? Yeah, so, well, David and I, we've been friends for about five years, purely over the internet, messaging back and forth, all about pinball and music, and uh, we worked previously on his Led Zeppelin re theme of the uh, Valley Freedom, 1976, and then he asked if I was a fan of Motorhead, which, of course I was, it's the loudest show I've ever seen, and uh, so we started throwing ideas back and forth, he was working on his white wood, and I started exploring what the visual world would be, with a bit of a, like a centaur inspiration, yeah, that, yeah. that kind of monochrome, limited color palette, and uh, his design philosophy as far as 
uh, layout is kind of like uh, a retro single level play field with a dual right flipper scissor situation, uh, but also integration of some modern features like modes and uh, you know video components. So it's accessible to the lay person with a you know not an intimidating rule set. Anybody can come up and play and have fun. But for those that have the skill and the you know the knowledge of pinball, there's more to dig into and, nice. and be rewarded by. It. So you know, I don't know much about Motorhead. I know a lot of people don't. One of the things that I noticed was like it's pretty damn funny. Like yes. the guys are calling you out. They're kind of antagonizing you. Yes. I know this Lemmy guy, yeah. and I know he's a character. What's his story, and like how did you integrate him into the game? Man, he's just uh, Motorhead is synonymous with Lemmy. Um, <laughs> He was just a legend and uh, just such a defiant devil may care kind of attitude. Got the button chops, right? That was button chops, like huge mole on his face. Uh, you know, everything louder than everything else. You know, we are motorhead. We're just, you know. And were they tongue in cheek about that or was that, oh, yeah. that was them? No, that was just the, that was the whole vibe. It was yeah. fun, yeah. but aggressive. Um, you know, it's it's very early thrash, which directly leads to like Metallica. Right, right. right. It's you know. Yeah, I mean, if you look these guys up, I mean, so many uh, famous artists are, were inspired by Lemmy and these guys. Yeah. Uh, so very cool. So, yeah. so the, there's there's three of these. Is that what I hear? Um, in in different states of disrepair. Yeah, okay. So that part yeah. of the process. So, yeah, yeah. So we haven't mentioned him yet. Matt Kemp is our programmer. Okay. Okay. Uh, you might know him from working on Ultraman and Halloween. Yep. 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 He happens to be about 10 minutes away from Dave in New Zealand. So the two of them could work together in person, you know, figuring out how the yeah. implementation yeah. of the rules is going to work. And then I've been with them strictly over Facebook Messenger and email for you know the last couple of years. And in fact, we just met in person just, okay. just three days okay. ago. But we were already like, best system friends <laughs> yeah so I mean, the collaboration on this like obviously it's very art driven probably yeah. from the beginning yeah that glass is awesome it's got this muted you know color that you know i wouldn't think would work you know just right to, described it to me but uh it looks really great yeah yeah so um, it's a black black red white um so i was responsible for the cabinet back glass the play field the art blades We've got a dimensional component in the, uh, the inner back panel. I did animation and motion graphics, and then uh, user interface layout that then Matt has like actually brought to life. Yeah. Yeah. We got tell a, us about uh, the what you did with Spooky on this because I know that they were a part of. That's what yeah. helped me bring this to life. Because so Spooky sponsored it. They provided the uh, the control board, the work board, okay, um, and some of. You know the just the mechanical guts of how uh, how it's put together. David constructed the cabinet himself. Uh, the idea was to do it with largely just stock parts. Yep. Um, we have some original playfield, uh, you know, bash toy sculpts type things in the topper, uh, but largely it's it's stock components. Just yeah, yeah. You guys are going to be doing uh, maybe a stream on this coming up, getting a little bit more deep dive in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah. I believe they're going to do a stream uh, from Benton, okay. Benton, Wisconsin, Spooky HQ. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. So last thing, uh, the Shake It feature. Yeah. Uh, I love I, it. I want to get in on that, and I want you to kind of describe uh, that to us, and maybe we'll get back to it. Yeah. So the, the left out lane rollover triggers um, basically a disconnect on the tilt pop so that you can shake the pieces out of the machine yeah. and save it from going out the out lane. And it goes shake it. You mind if I fail that? One of my favorite one of my favorite call outs is if if you fail the zero shake brought no one to the yard. Very cool. Yeah, the voice call-outs are particularly great. Yes, the voice is great. So, Brad Albright, uh, he's got his booth right over here. He's got he does amazing artwork. Thank you. Got to pick up his TPF poster. You guys are here. Uh, thanks for showing it off. And also, uh, Brad is collaborating with the Electric Playground on a topper that we've got coming up later this year. Uh, we, are, we do have a sneak peek at the show. Feedback's been amazing. 
I can't tell you how many people have been like, I know who did that artwork. That's Brad. So yeah, yeah. That's uh, style and distinctive. So uh, very excited to be putting that out there. And uh, Brad, congrats on Motorhead. It's awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Hey, I'm here on the uh, Precision Flip stand with the lovely John from Precision Flips. Uh, we're at uh, Texas Pitbull Festival. Uh, we're on the third day now, isn't it? Sunday? Day three, and my voice is starting <laughs> to really falter. I think, I think everybody's voice is a little bit low. Yeah. All we've been doing is been playing people and uh, talking to people and you more so than most. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to go out and play any of the new games, but just maybe 10 minutes. So, But it's 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 good. I like, you know, I like... Uh, some of the new stuff. It's yeah, pretty neat. Great, isn't it? They uh, definitely need a little bit of a flipper enhancement on some of them. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and so, what, so what John does is he builds precision flips. Now, I really hope it doesn't know. It's these uh, machine aluminium flippers that improve the, uh, the overheating coils of uh, modern flippers. Um, precision of the shots. Right. Yeah, the the big advantage because you're not losing any of the mechanical, you know, uh, uh, it's right. I mean, it, the coil has to overcome the slop that's in the factory setup. So this takes all that away and makes it a lot more efficient. So the coil does its job without any kind of, you know, flipping and uh, okay. this, wasted but... wasted energy yeah, yeah, yeah. is the big thing. Yeah. So most of the customers can reduce. The coil powers down 15, 20 clicks easy. Yeah. These games, these games have been in here on for 14, 16 hours, yeah. and they play as fresh as they did at 16 hours as they did when they first turned them on. People down at the uh, Marcos turn booth playing those games, they come back and they go, "Wow, your game plays a lot different." Well, it's because of the flippers. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? I've got Timothy with Pin Sound. You all know his products. You probably have some of them, but they got the new stuff for the show. Is this the, are you debuting these things here? or Definitely. So th thanks a lot for stopping by. This is awesome technology we are releasing for the GPF 2024. The Pin Vision and Pin Blaster are the two new products we are showing off for the Texas Pinball Festival. The Pin Vision is a, is a LED matrix who goes on the top of the, the speaker. It's I would say it's not a speaker wing because it's way more. It's uh, 2D matrices uh, synchronized with the game. So it's actually uh, LED matrices, but it's like uh, matching the pitch of the grid. You can see. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is, you guys are doing custom animations for each game for this, right? So you're building these to the game? Correct. Currently yeah. we do support uh, Godzilla, Jurassic Park, and Elvira. But now we have two platforms, a hardware platform. We'll be able to uh, add custom uh, custom animation like once every month. And uh, currently we are we are offering a boat. Then uh, the next item I guess would be uh, stranger things. Let me show you uh, how it works behind the scenes. It goes. It replaces the uh, original speaker holder here. It's all in included, like very easy to set up. You have the controller here. Uh, take it to the 48 volt, the original one, so no fiddling with the service uh, socket. What's amazing to the, uh, the sound, because we are pin sound and uh, we do love the sound, uh, we needed to do something about the, uh, the sound and the spike games. Here we are, because uh, we do offer aftermarket speakers, but we want to go further. Here is a 15 second uh, amplifier. You simply disconnect the power supply and, uh, and uh, speaker wires, slap it on, on it, 15 seconds maximum, and that's it. You have 200 watts. That's uh, with fine control, like a tone control, external output, daisy chaining for subwoofer of up to six games. So if you have multiple by two games, you can daisy chain them for a single uh, subwoofer, external subwoofer. That's, that's the way to go. Yeah, the which price is 200 and it's a no-brainer for a game room. So, so this enhances the current speakers on the system? Correct. Yeah. You do not need no. to add no, new speakers. No, yeah. it's, it works with the original one, the 4 inch one, yeah. and it does yeah. work with the 5 inch two, of course. And, and you can add a sub, too, and it yeah, external sub, or, yeah. 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 Awesome, awesome. Well, yeah, guys, uh, re really cool product. I mean, this is a, a simple solution, obviously. More affordable than some of the options out there. Definitely affordable. Yeah. And if you want to go down the do-it-yourself way, it will pretty much cost you the same. So I think it's a no-brainer. Awesome.
We're here with Chris Turner with Turner Pinball Ninja oh. Eclipse. Uh, you guys were not very far along, at least as far as you are now at TPF last year. Here we are a year later. Yep. And uh, it's really coming together. The game looks great. How's the reception been so far? It's been awesome. So, uh, yeah, last year we were here at TPF. We had our whitewood prototype. It was uh, really early. I mean, we just barely shootable. But uh, we got a lot of great feedback on it. And we iterated through the play field and the shots. Uh, then we went to uh, Expo in October. And um, we went with a slimline cabinet that I thought people were going to think was really cool. But I, uh, I realized the cabinet was like a sacred thing, and I didn't know about that. <laughs> the, the cabinet cabin is sacred. We have so learned, right? That's, that's what I learned. <laughs> And so we took all the feedback that we got up there and we incorporated it into this final design and the reception has been amazing. I mean, people have loved it, they've come, they've been complimenting on the artwork, the layout. Uh, everyone really likes the scoop the scoop shot. It's kind of like a ninja wall jump. And uh, the game has performed great, played great, and uh, we're super excited. Nice, so you're doing 100 of these, right? Yes, sir. Uh, looking into 100. I mean, when you set out on this journey, like, Obviously, you know, you're taking the feedback. Uh, what are some things that have surprised you about just the process of making this? Is it a bit harder? I know you've made pinballs in the past, but doing it on your own is a whole other story. Pinball's hard. There's a lot to it. I mean, it's probably the most multidisciplinary project I've ever worked on. Yeah. And so we've got a talented team. Uh, we've got electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, software engineers, artists, animators. It takes all of those different skills to make a great pinball machine. Yeah, yeah. So, do you, so, so you're doing a hundred of these, you may do some more in some different configurations, but you're probably also thinking about, you know, what's next. And this has been a, a, a jumping off point for that. How far are you on what's next? Well, I'm really taking it one step at a time. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I want to, I want to get these, I want to get them shipped. And then I also don't want to be behind on the next thing. So I'm kind of yeah. trying to balance those two things. Yeah, yeah. You know, as mod makers, or in your case, the ultimate mod, which is the game itself, you know, it's a process of, like, balancing those two things. But, you know, you're going to learn about also supporting it, too. Like, you know, you can't well, lose sight of that, um, which could be really tough. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, what else do we know about Ninja Eclipse in terms of things that are different about it or the things you're most excited about? So there's a really deep backstory to this. The team put a lot of effort into it. You know, we came with this unlicensed theme, and we thought it was important that we develop that story to really engage the audience. Uh, we've got a 36-page illustrated comic book that my team developed. We also put together a short video. It's on our YouTube channel, uh, Turner Pinball on YouTube. People can go, and they've got to get a glimpse of what the backstory is. But um, our artist and playfield designer, Brad Duke, he was actually an English teacher in Japan for a while. And so he knows a lot about Japanese culture and all the things that you see on the playfield. I mean, these are like legitimate Japanese folklore things, the characters and everything. All of that actually means something. And there were a few people that came up and played it, and they were like, they actually knew Japanese. And they were like, oh, this means this, this means that. And so it's really cool to see people recognizing that there's actually a deeper meaning here. I mean, it's beautiful, but there's more to it than you might just play outside. So this is shipping roughly. In fall. I'm estimating about six months to start okay. shipping, so we're taking okay. orders now. We think that it's going to take probably three to four months to get some parts, and then we'll start building it. And will the code be like really where you want it, or is it going to be early at that point? Will it keep developing? So we've been working on the code from the very beginning. Um, we went to Expo with code that's about 60% complete. We're about 95% now. We've got one more wizard mode to implement, but I really want this to be completely full featured at launch. And then it's interesting because I, I talked to some folks here at the show and I was like, they noticed that I put like code complete at delivery. Okay. And they said, I actually don't like that. And I was like, really? Yeah, yeah. And they said, well, it's nice to have little things that are going to come out and we're like excited to look forward to the next feature. So I said, okay, I need to try to balance that, right? I'm always trying to listen and learn. Yeah. And so we're going to give a full feature game, but maybe we have a few things we could add. To bring more value uh, yeah. to the game over time. You know, take us on the journey with you. I got Jerry Stellenberg with T3 Multimorphic. How you doing? I'm so going. It's going great. The Good. lines have been huge the entire yeah, show. I've noticed. I've only got in like one game and I had to get into special time to get in the Yeah, yeah. even Saturday night with the VIP party, everyone oh, came and flocked over. Well, and there was a big rush and the rush first out and a lot of it came here, which yeah, is yeah. exciting. 
you know, you've done a lot of shows, debuted a lot of games. Did anything feel different about this one to you? I mean, it, it's a bigger theme. It's a bigger title than we've done yeah. before. People walk in knowing they want to play the Princess Bride. We had Weird Al before, but, but this seems bigger, and it's a movie theme. Yeah, and we I can mean, do movie theme. Movie theme. Yeah. yeah. We can do movie themes on this system better than anyone else can because we have that screen and we can immerse you in the content of it. So it's Absolutely. really cool. Absolutely. So anything you've been surprised to hear? Because this is really the first time you've showed it, right? It's the first show it's been at. A lot of people have played No, it seems like most people love it. They walked away smiling. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a full package. The art is amazing. It really all comes together. The topper's pretty sweet, too. I'm a topper guy. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, anything interactive about it? It looks like you've got some both. Yeah. It's early in the development of the topper code, but the, the storybook is interacting, telling you your progress in the modes. The, yeah. the flame spurts go when the when you activate the fire swamp mode, and it, yeah. Yeah. and light shows run through it too. So I know, you know, so so there's these guys out here making mods. Like it seems like there's a couple themes that people have like kind of run with with the multi-format platform and done their own. Like you guys are welcoming folks to come in and design yeah. their own stuff. Yeah, so we consider it an open system, an open platform. So we have a development kit. Developers can write their own games. They can create their own modules. They can make their own button boxes. If they want a different button configuration, yeah, they can yeah. do that themselves. Uh, we, we work with people to help them make the system better for them. All right, so we're going to do a little tour of some of the other platforms. You've got about six, maybe even ten we have, different titles at this point. We have eight physical modules, including Drained, which is a third-party one. And there's 21 total games with downloadable games included in that. So you don't necessarily have to have the full package to play some different games. I think we've got some options on it. Like the Heist Playfield. We have one Heist running Heist and then another one running Dungeon Door Defender on the Heist Playfield. Alright, so P3 Multimorphic, super innovative platform. Lots of different options with this. You know, you're going to have a lot of life. Uh, and, and you guys are all building the spec of the original cabinet that you're buying, right? So if I bought the That's cabinet right. today, like, I would know for a long time, everything you're making is going to be compatible with that. That's right. Everything's fabric compatible to the original machines. The original original The original, original, wow. original machines. The first ones we've shipped. And any upgrade we've done can be retrofitted in old. All right. All right, guys. Check him out. Jerry with P3 Hey, guys. Hey guys. We're here with Andy from Rocket City Pinball at the Rocket City Pinball booth at TPF 2024. Uh, it's Sunday, so we've been through uh, three days of uh, talking yeah. and selling, and how's it been going, man? Oh, it's been going great. It's been an amazing show. I'm really tired, but it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. But now the crowd's been huge. The games have been great. I had, a, I had some time to sneak away and play some pinball, get some high scores all over the place. Yeah, so got my cool. name peppered in some games. Too. All right, all right. Yeah. So now having a blast there it's been awesome cool and uh, i can see that your uh, jaws uh airball deflector is out the front there yes i what's been the figure line on that oh that, that, you know it's been really funny because people have been coming here being like oh this is that thing i heard about oh let me just grab one of this so it's been selling really well yeah got enough stock oh uh, barely barely i got a couple left so if anybody's watching they got to you know, come back and get one great stuff man yeah, yeah no, I mean, everybody's uh, saying really good things about it good. i think the uk crew picked up seven didn't they when yes. they came past yeah, it, yeah so. your buddy got seven or eight yeah, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully it'll be all over UK now. That's great. Now, what's, uh, what have been some of the other uh, items that people think like to see on um, this? Uh... Well, aside from all the Jaws stuff, I mean, the star buttons are always kind of like my, my big thing that everybody loves. Everybody walks down the road and they say, oh, look at these pretty lights. And then they come up and they say, oh, wow, those are buttons for games. Cool. The Jaws so, one's my absolute favorite. Oh, thank you. That yeah, that one's a lot of fun. It's, you know, so many different colors on that one. Yeah. But I got a bunch of new stuff, uh, new star buttons this time around that I didn't have last time. I made a fun one for Demolition Man with, uh, you know, the, the star kind of hidden in the ice here. Um, with the claw. Um, of course, I got Labyrinth. This Labyrinth's you know, relatively new and a lot of fun. Yeah, That's an old Iron Maiden one right there. I got Looney Tunes. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so people love the start buttons, and I'm happy to provide them. They're yeah. a lot of fun to design and put yeah. together. I can see the uh, Jaws boy, uh, life, life Preserve yeah. boy out the front there. Yeah, so I brought it to, to start showing it off. I haven't put it up for sale yet, but I'm you know, working out some details in the finish. I want to make it a little bit smoother. Yeah, and that's this, for the uh, center button, isn't it? Correct. The lockdown bar. Yeah, because on the, in the game, you know, the, the lockdown bar button serves as your, your light ring. Yeah. So a light ring around perfect. it was perfect. So, yeah. so I've got this version, and I'm trying to make another version that has uh, the Orca lettering on there. That one's been proven challenging, but I'll go look at there. But I'll have the red ones up for sale. You need bits here to, to hold down the rope on this version. So actually, yeah, this one's kind of fun, because the way I modeled this one is I actually put holes behind the wrap and I feed the rope through, so it actually okay. goes all the way, all the way through. But I have an option to be with or without the rope if they want that like that. So. so, yeah, it's a lot of fun doing this stuff. It's just, oh, need more time, need more hours <laughs> yeah. in the day. All right, I think we all sort of fall into that category. I think, sure. For sure. 
Hey guys, I'm here with uh, Paul Pimo, I know it's Jasper Shea on the inside. Uh, Paul's the guy who did the amazing Atomic Godzilla, uh, for Godzilla, um, and a bunch of other mods. Um, we're here at the Stern uh, Arena, yeah. and uh, amongst the Jawsers, um, but you've also done lots of other games, like James Bond. Yeah, much. that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, tell us a little bit about that one. So, I mean, we were talking about it earlier, but uh, with James Bond, I really didn't know what I was going to look at in terms of mods. I didn't know what opportunities there would be until I played it. But once you play the games, that's what's great about going somewhere like this. You really get to get under the hood a little bit and play them and experience how they flow and where the points of interest are in the game. And that's what I love about, about getting here and getting physical with the games. So with James Bond, once I got to actually play it a little bit at home, that's where I realized that I really wanted that moment of the laser cutting scene. Yeah. And that's what I worked on and put all the effort into, really. So, you know, it's getting that moment of inspiration when you're actually playing it a little bit. So, yeah. Have you found the same thing going around the uh, yeah. festival this time around? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, obviously, we've been hanging out a little bit, but playing some of the games here, particularly Jaws, is really, really inspiring, and it gives you some ideas. Like, honestly, before coming here, I didn't know what I might do with Jaws, but it's given me a few good ideas. But also playing the old games, you know, like really old games. You see little mechs that haven't been used in any recent games, and it just sparks ideas, and you sort of cross-pollinate a little bit of the new stuff with the old stuff, and it just sort of triggers some interesting thoughts. So, yeah. we were over on Elvis, weren't we? Yes, yeah. The amazing... Uh, hip, hip wiggling Elvis. Awesome. I mean, what an amazing thing that is. So right? cool, so yeah. simple, but so effective. You yeah. know? So looking at things like that really triggers the inspiration. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward now to getting stuck in on some new ideas, actually. Right. So yeah. Yeah, I'm all looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, well, hopefully that'll turn out good. Yeah, so, yeah. Aaron, <laughs> basketball. Hello. How are you, man? The, I, it's Sunday afternoon at TPF. My voice is gone. <laughs> we're thinking we're going to update some firmware and stuff in the booth. We're insane. Oh like God. it's just the stuff you try to do at the end of a show, yeah. and I don't know, I, I'm blathering right now, but like the homebrew space here, it's, it's, it's packed. Like this has been so this, full all this weekend. This has been the busiest section of the yes. entire show. Yeah. And I think that's such a testament to what these guys have done. Yes. Your assistance in what they've done. I know. Where the technology's at, where the skill level is at of these yes. guys. is buzz. Oh yeah. I mean, when we come in, the door opens, and everyone's making a beeline over here. Like, Yamoto would walk over and said, like, you know, the lines are longer here than we're seeing in all the other games around, which is so exciting for everybody here. I mean, the ability to, like, bust ass and get to a show and actually show off your work, it's a, it's a good goal for a project. But I think the camaraderie here has been, yeah. like, the best part. I mean, yeah. I've been so proud seeing people bring their friends over to come meet us. They're like, yeah. we want to do a homebrew. And they need to talk to us to hear how, like, encouraging, how supportive we want to be and stuff like that. The fact that, like, we just want you to join the madness with us yeah. and actually bring up him on the scene of the life. And, you know? and the quality level of these games, like, nothing I've seen before. This is off the charts. Like, yeah. we, we did a, 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 a Making Pimble, Making Friends, like, panel the other day. And I appreciated Ernie Silverberg at the end jumped in to say, by the way, if you come by and see the homebrews, these are fit and finish off the charts, like our packages, everything else. Usually you see some white woods and things like that. We don't want people we don't want people to feel discouraged that like their project might not be at the full dress stage. Just getting here with a game that does anything, you're gonna get feedback, you're gonna try things out, you're gonna like find out whether things are fun or not. Like getting to shows is definitely a good like milestone in your big pinball journey. Yeah. For so. people who don't know, so Fast Pinball creates uh, essentially a board set yep. that facilitates the building of a pinball machine. Yep. So not all of these games are running fast. It's not all of them, no. Yep. So, so most of them tend to be. Yeah, so Saw and Beavis and Butthead are using our modern system. Uh, Swords of Vengeance is running our retro system, which is like a system level, like drop-in board, like you see in the conversion kits, like the 2.0 projects and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like we've made some good friends here, so maybe people's next games will be in the Fast Family. So really, really, yeah. very proud but of that. You also uh, run this production for like manufacturers. Yes, as well, don't you? absolutely. So, that was kind of running the Fast Family. Very so. proud to be a part of the Labyrinth project. Like yeah. I was telling people earlier yeah. that like. You know, I hadn't seen the Labyrinth movie since I was a kid, maybe at a slumber party. So I put it on about a month ago. And I was telling my wife, it's like watching the Labyrinth movie. It's like watching a movie made about the pinball machine my friends made. <laughs> so you see all the characters and the jokes and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's why that makes sense. Yeah. So working with them has been fantastic. We got to actually be involved enough to be, 
provide some guidance. And some, you know, this is how we would do it if we built a game. They're like, cool, everything makes sense. So it's been a really great thing to be a part of a really complicated project like a pinball machine. And we can be over in our corner, ready to help out anytime you need it. So that's what we try to do for all the commercial projects. Yeah, you know, have to be as made as a company to sort of absorb that. Scale, I suppose. Honestly, it hasn't been bad. Like, so during all the supply chain challenges we've had over the last so many years, you know, we got ahead of it a bit. We have worked with a lot of other big customers outside of pinball that were like, trouble's coming. So we were buying up power supply, or sorry, uh, uh, processors and things like that. So we kind of were forced to really figure out what you do with a lot of stuff going on all at once. Yeah. So when it gets down to then scaling up for the needs of manufacturing, it's doing the stuff that we've done, but just at a greater scale. So our manufacturing partner stateside, it's just like crank up the numbers. You yeah, know? Exactly. So, you get all your PCBs done in the States. So right. Yeah, yeah. So a little bit, we do some LED stuff overseas and stuff still, yeah. but I was actually able to convince our manufacturers locally. I said, if you buy this certain machine, 50 grand. I'm not just going to grind, grind you on price, but I can bring stuff back stateside yeah. because it becomes more cost effective yeah. and stuff. So we're so proud of being able to aim what we're doing wherever it needs to. And even looking at the future with some of our partners that we're working with overseas in Europe and stuff now to come up with a licensing model where we get our boards manufactured over in Europe yeah. as getting around tear outs and extra shipping stuff back and forth. So really looking at the ways not only for scaling up production ourselves, but find ways to let our customers save money on higher volume production because we, I mean, Businessy business, we still make the same money if they're doing a lot of manufacturing over there and saving money on shipping. Brian Redshaw, my buddy from St. Louis, he runs the league that I'm in. I think I, I think I took you down. Um, you beat me. Beat me. You got me first. Yeah. Beat division, yeah. Judge Dread came through for me. So, Absolutely. So Brian works on what's called Free Wars, which yep. are Free World War Two. Free World War Two. Uh, we've got a huge collection of free wars. How many of these are yours? Uh, five of them are mine. Yeah. Okay, so five of these are yours. And, and, you know, I've been hearing about this airway game. The airway is one of my absolute favorites. And if I understand it, there's there's ten cities, you've got ten balls. You've got ten trying balls, to... you've got ten shots, you can play a perfect game. You've yet to see anyone pull it off. Yeah, he's got a $100 offer for anyone that can hit it. <laughs> uh, and we haven't had to pay that down again. So, yeah, so they're literally giving away 100 bucks if anyone does it. You've done seven? Before? I've gotten up to seven. I've seen someone get nine, and they just missed the tenth shot. Like All right, shot give it. us a little demo of this guy. All right. So it goes all the way around, and then you can bump it. It does have a tilt. Most people don't realize that that's up in the top right corner. There's a tilt back, but it's more to keep it from lifting the front end than it is from nudging. All right, I'm going to let you go. Get up there. And this was also one of the first ones to have a score totalizer. So it shows you which ones you've scored at the bottom. So it's easier to add them up. Yeah, I'm a pair there we go, Cleveland. Oh, I've got the four worthless ones. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm good in New York. Chicago, yes. That's the one I never get. If you're recording and I hit 10, I'm going to love you forever. <laughs> oh. So what, uh, what what condition would you say this is on a scale of 1 to 10? This is pretty good. This is probably a 7 or 8 at least. Like, we've got it all cleaned up really well. Everything's working. I don't think the cabinet is original. Jeff has one over here that I think is an original cabinet, and you can see some of the differences with it. But it's whoever made the new cabinet did a fantastic job, yeah. and it looks very good. So it's like I never complained on it. So how hard is this to come by? Like, do these come up? Or they come up like... every so often. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, if we're in the Facebook group, we've seen two or three come up in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So you can find them. It's just a matter of are you willing right, to pay what right, they're going right. for. And what's the rough price on something like this? I, I've seen them go for 500 I've seen them go for over a thousand it just depends on who has it how much they want to keep it and how much somebody wanting to buy is willing yeah, to go yeah. if awesome. you get into a bidding war yeah. they get expensive yeah, go. we're here on sunday you know i gotta get some don's pinball podcast in. Final here day. Yeah, don's and don's pinball podcast final day of tgf show just about to close and my voice is about this i can tell i can tell dude it's sounded rough it's so loud here you're screaming for three days straight yeah uh, yeah this video is going to have all sorts of pops we're a little loud right now but uh, we're here at back alley creations yeah. uh these guys do some awesome stuff can you say hi guys back alley creations 
Uh, these guys just some sick stuff. Anything jumping out at you? Yeah, so this is this wooden apron they've got for Jaws. It's amazing. They've got a light up little corner here with the head of the dude's toad who gets eaten, right? I mean, you got a coming shooter rod. It's fairly grotesque, but I mean, come on. Come on. Uh, he's also doing his uh, take on the Elvira Crips. These have been amazing. I've got my own variation. People have their own up inside. So much fun to add more 3D to you know, the flat plastics that oh, we yeah, have there. Definitely. I have this for Scooby Doo. Oh, this is like a, a <laughs> official, right? This or, is for the Ape, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So he did all the sculpts for the castle and rock work for Scooby Doo for Spooky, but he also has this optional apron you can add. And even more minecart characters if you want to put them on there. So all this stuff is uh, resin cast that he does. He's the guy that does all the dripping blood and goo and whatever. Pick your uh, color. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the selection has really expanded over the years. So if you want to add any kind of goo or other bodily fluid to your game, like this is your guy. So what else you seen? Anything? You played anything new that really jumped out at you? Yeah, so I mean, you know, spending more time on barbecue. Princess Five, this is the first time playing that here. Yeah. And, you know, it's enjoyable for what it is. It's it's a, a niche product for a niche market. So It's you know. gorgeous. I mean, like, if you love Princess Bride, I think you're going to have to jump in on it. I yeah. love that theme so much that I'm even compelled to consider it, you know. But it's the sort of thing that the people that have a P3 will tell you all day about how much they love it, and people that don't have a lot of reasons why they don't. But they're here to play, and it's a fun game. Um, I got to get on the send card, the one of one. Will there ever be any more? And maybe the rarest production pinball machine of all time, and it's here. Uh, yeah, well, they'll, they'll get there. They'll get there. What shows you got coming up? Anything else on your so radar? So will probably be at Southern Fine Gaming Expo okay. in July down okay. in Atlanta. Expo for sure. Probably MGC in Milwaukee. Beyond that, it's all speculation. Cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, signing off from TBF, guys. It's been great. Uh, great to have Don here with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Uh, little Wonka action. Yeah. He's got five gold tickets. They're probably all gone by now. People, but people finally found them all. They've been turning them in all weekend for t-shirts. Awesome. It's been a blast. Take care, guys. Yeah.